This is not a stranger to our house, David Ray. He is from Healing Place Church. He serves there faithfully. And um, yeah, I think he is a big Roll Tide fan. So y'all might want to just say Roll Tide. No, I'm joking. Like they are so LSU. I think really they they bleed purple and gold. So, um, <laughs> but we're so... <laughs> So, but we're so super excited that he is here this morning. Last time he came, we just had a ball. And so we're grateful that you're here, David. And um, yeah, let's just welcome him this morning. Oh, man. There's an enemy in the camp. I am not an Alabama fan, but just to clear that up, everybody, I don't want to start on the wrong foot, but I am a Tennessee fan. You should feel sorry for me. So it should be no anger or animosity here because we are good at losing. But it's so good to be here today. Man, let's clap our hands for the worship team and the band. Are you kidding me? Man, so good. And the prayer time, it, it, this has been refreshing for my soul. I got my son here with me. We have, we have four kids. We are that family. Any, any people have four or more in here? Let me see. Fantastic. We're crazy, aren't we? We are crazy. But I brought my favorite child with me today. Elijah, why don't you wave at everybody? He's an athlete. Man, a, a stud. He's awesome. But uh, it's such a privilege to be here with you guys today and just love your pastors so much. Come on, do you love your pastors in the house? We love them. And so thankful for... The opportunity, anytime you have the opportunity to preach, and especially when someone asks you to come to, to their church, is just so humbling. Um, and I, I'm truly thankful to be here. How many of you wish you had that hour back from last night? Anybody? My goodness, just chasing that hour. Oh, man, it's really 948, everybody. So, But it's good to be here, man. What a, what a lively environment. Do y'all like church? Good. Okay, good. Y'all kind of get quiet on me for a second. Oh, goodness. Uh, listen, I know preachers say this, but it's true. If, if you help me today, it'll be better. And if you help me, it'll be faster. How I many you know that's worth helping out? Get to Piccadilly or wherever you like to eat as soon as possible. But, but we'll, uh, we'll pray together and we'll dive in. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for this house. Thank you for the generosity of the people in this place. Their heart for you, God, the, just the worship and, and encountering the Holy Spirit this morning and what you're speaking to us. And we just ask that you will help us to lean in. Speak to us a fresh word today, God. I, I ask you that this will not just be something that man says, but this will be from, from your mouth, Lord, and that you will speak to us specifically about what we're dealing with, what we're going through. I pray for people who are walking the valley right now, that you'll give people supernatural strength. Thank you, as we were saying earlier, that, that God, you're the one who's able to break chains and, and bring power and deliverance. And we look to Jesus. In Jesus' name, everybody says... Amen and amen. We'll, we'll dive in. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to two different passages of Scripture. The first will be in the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 13, and then the second one we'll look in Acts chapter 2, Exodus chapter 13, and then Acts chapter 2. And these are a little bit lengthy texts, but we'll, we'll make them through and, and just uh, stay with me and, and hold on. But I want to talk to you today. The title of this message is Follow the Cloud. Somebody say, Follow the Cloud. You say, what in the world does that mean? You're going to find out soon. But I want you to see Exodus chapter 13. The Bible talks about God's people being delivered. It says, starting in verse 17 and 18, and we'll continue to read. It says, when Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them among the main road that runs through Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest route to the promised land. God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Verse 18 says, so God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness towards the Red Sea. How many sometimes in your life you feel like God's leading you in a roundabout way? You look at the destination, you're like, hey, God, maybe you don't realize, but this is a shorter path to where I'm trying to get to. God has a way of leading us in a roundabout way because he knows the temptations we face. He knows the struggles and the battles we face. He knows the weakness of our flesh. Anybody have some weak flesh in here? He knows it. And so he takes us along the path that will continually get us to where we need to go. So God led them a roundabout way through the wilderness of the Red Sea. Thus the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. Skip down to verse 21. It says, the Lord went ahead of them. It's important to note that God is the leader. We are the follower. Can I have a better amen this morning? It says, he guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud, and he provided at night with a pillar of fire. So they allowed them to travel by day or night. 
The Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or fire from its place in front of the people. Okay, so this is a lot right here, but then I want you to look at Acts chapter 2. In these passages, we'll see in a moment how they're related. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, very familiar text here. It says, in the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly. There was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm. So mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames and tongues of fire, so you see fire, so you see wind and fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. How many thank you for the Holy Spirit in the house? Amen, everybody. And began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave this ability. I want to talk to you for a few minutes today about the subject of following the cloud. In Exodus, what we just read, this is the historical account of God delivering his people from bondage. How many of you are familiar with the book of Exodus? And, and God would send these plagues, and there was a man by the name of Pharaoh who was over all of Egypt, and he was very stubborn of heart, uh, and he would not allow God's people to leave. And finally, through a series of events, they were able to leave, and God, as we see, directed his people by cloud and by fire. And it's important for us to know, sometimes we read these texts and we kind of, we skim over them. Maybe you learned them in Sunday school. Maybe you learned them when you are a little child. And you get so familiar with them that you forget what it'd be like if you were them. Can you imagine if thousands of years ago you were the Hebrews who were in bondage and you lived in Egypt and all you ever knew, all you had ever seen was Egypt and slavery. That was it. Like, all you knew was Egypt. I love, I live in Baton Rouge. Anybody ever heard of Baton Rouge in here? <laughs> Fantastic. I live in Baton Rouge. It's so funny to me that people in Baton Rouge and then like somebody who lives in Prairieville, I don't know if you're familiar with Prairieville, Peeville, and then someone in Gonzales, if you ask them where they're from and they live in Prairieville, which is like right next to Baton Rouge, I guarantee you they will not say I'm from Baton Rouge. They'll say I'm from Prairieville. And somebody who lives in Gonzales, you've never heard of Gonzales. Anybody heard of Gonzales in here? Fantastic. You guys are saved. <laughs> somebody who lives in G-Town, I promise you, will not say they live in Baton Rouge. Because to them, Baton Rouge is Egypt, everybody. <laughs> they don't like it. That's not where they're from. And God's people, all they ever knew was Egypt. Egypt was their favorite music group. Their favorite Television shows were in Egypt. I'm just playing. But they just, they loved Egypt. It's, it's who they were. It's where they were from. You say, where your daddy from? He's from Egypt. Where your granddaddy from? He's from Egypt. Where your great grandma from? She's from Egypt. You guys are smart up here in Hammond. <laughs> from Egypt. It was intertwined in them. In fact, listen to me, and the same thing can happen to us. Their identity was in Egypt even though it was a place of bondage, a place of slavery, a place that they were suppressed down when God had a plan to lift them up. Sometimes we can get so used to being on the down and outs and defeated, but we serve a God who holds all victory and power, and he wants us to walk in that victory and power. Can I get a better amen this morning? So their identity was there, and God starts to move among them, but they needed two things. So I want you to remember this today. They needed two things. They needed deliverance. And the only one who could deliver them was God Almighty. And they also needed direction to where they were going. They needed deliverance and they didn't need direction. And I would propose to you today that you and I are the same, same place. We need deliverance that can only be brought through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not good enough to deliver myself. You're not good enough to deliver yourself. There's no works that you and I could do to deliver us from the slavery that Romans says that we're in to sin. But Jesus has been sent. The Father sent Jesus to deliver people. When Jesus showed up on the scene and he gives his, his statement as far as his mission, he says, I have come to set the captives what? Free. free. That's what Jesus did. That's who Jesus is. He's come to set the captives free. And the Father sent Jesus to give us deliverance. But also, this is good news, the Father sent the Holy Spirit to give us direction. And I love the passage in Acts it talks about this wind, talks about this fire. And for, for the Jewish person, when they read this, there is an immediate connection to being delivered from Egypt and for the Holy Spirit to lead them into where God is taking them. See, where you are now is not your destination. 
God is always moving you. I don't care how old you are, what your background's like, what you've been through, what you haven't been through. Man, God is always moving his people to the next place that he has for them. And God was moving them in an intentional way to where he was leading them. And in Exodus chapter 13, you see this taking place. You see every single day when they would wake up. How many people in here, you wake up slow? I mean, you, you, you don't wake up fast. You need like 15 cups of coffee. Let me see you. Where are you at? Extra coffee in here, man. How many of you wake up fast? Let me see who I'm jealous of this morning. Oh, Lord, help me with that jealousy right now. You just wake up. I pray to God. I'm like, Lord, please just give me energy in the morning. I got to drink like just pots of coffee to have enough energy. Can you imagine every single morning waking up? And one of the first things you did once you got on your, 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 your sandals to walk in the wilderness, and the first thing you did, you opened up that tent. You got your family in there. Your kids been screaming all night long. I mean, parents in here, let me see you. And you wake up, and you look outside, and what are you trying to find? You're trying to find where the cloud is. Can you imagine every single day? Like after you have your Hebrew coffee, you get up. You stretch, you wipe your eyes. Man, you're getting ready for the day. Honey, it's time to get up. Kids, you've been keeping me up all night long. You better get up too. I love waking my kids up in the morning, especially when they keep me up at night. Everybody, every parent says amen, everybody. And you get them up and you look outside and what are they trying to find? Where's the cloud? If the cloud moved, they moved. If the cloud stayed, what'd they do? They stayed. Wherever the cloud went, they went. It didn't matter where it'd take them. They were following that cloud. Why? Because they needed direction in their life. I can't imagine packing things up on a routine basis. My wife, I love her to death. She is so sweet. She is so amazing, but she is the slowest packer when it comes to going on a trip. Any, any husbands understand what I'm saying in here today? Oh, Lord, have mercy. It takes forever to get things packed up. And I was just thinking about these people and how they have to pack up their stuff, but they were so committed. Man, where's the cloud going? Can I tell you today, there's a Holy Spirit who has been sent from on high, that we are to follow his leading wherever the Spirit of God takes us. Man, we don't blaze our own trail, our own path. If you want to get from where you are to where God wants you to be, it is only through the Holy Spirit that you're able to do that. And I love the scripture that says in John chapter 16, verse 13, it says this, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you, or say guide you, guide you into all truth. And I've just found in my own life, and those of you who maybe have been saved for a little while, you'll agree with this. If you want success in your life, if you want victory in your life, I promise you, if you want some peace in your life, man, I'm desperate for God's peace. If you want provision in your life, if you want anointing in your life, if you want God to do something supernatural in your life, you better get used to following the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's not strange. He's not weird. People are weird. People do weird stuff. How many of you know some weird folk in here? How many of you sitting next to somebody? I'm just, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. We friends up in here. As a church, I know where I'm from, Healing Place, in this church, we're not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. And we're desperate for the Holy Spirit. This whole thing, pursuit of his presence, it's not just something you ride on the wall. That's something you live. God, I got to have you. Every day that you wake up and your feet hit the floor, Holy Spirit, direct me today. Where is the cloud moving? And sometimes we have this mindset, at least I do. Man, God, I sure would like to have my own personal cloud. I mean, you know, that would keep you out of some trouble right there. Where are you going, what you should say, what you shouldn't say. How many of you have a hard time controlling your mouth? Mm -hmm. Some of y'all raising both hands, getting delivered in here. And can you imagine just every day having that cloud? And, and this is the thought we'll think. It was better then than it was now. But I can tell you this, that's not true. That cloud, listen to me, was external. The Holy Spirit now is internal. They were close to the presence. They were, had close proximity, but they lacked power from within. One of my favorite scriptures, and this is I encourage you, maybe you're not taking notes today, at least write this down. Philippians 2.13, if you guys will pull that up. Philippians 2.13, for God, everybody say for God. for God. For God is doing a work in me, 
giving me two things, the power and the ability to do what pleases him. I like that because I need some Holy Ghost power in my life. You say, what are you talking about, David? This is what I'm talking about. There are things that I cannot overcome in my own strength. And there's no shame in my game in admitting that. There's things you can't overcome. There's battles that are too big for you. But we serve a God who is able to have victory in any battle that you face. And we prayed earlier for cancer. We prayed earlier for diabetes. And we believe that God is able to heal. Can I have a good amen? But there are attacks on your family. There are attacks on your marriage. There are attacks on your kids. There are attacks in this culture that our God is stronger than them all. I'm telling you, man, some of us need to get a hold of this and understand, God, I need your power in my life. And God not only gives us the power to do what pleases him, but also the desire to do what pleases him. That he gives us a heart for him. But I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will not force you to follow him. I remember years ago, we were in Disney World. Any Disney World fans in the house? We were in Disney World, and we spent everything that we owned. That was just for the ice cream. And... My kids are like, let's go back. I'm like, I need about 10 years to be ready. We collecting money. Um, we were in Disney World, and we were getting ready to ride this roller coaster. Elijah, you'll remember this. He, he was with me. He's my, he's my brave kid when it comes to roller coasters. And we were getting ready, ready to ride a roller coaster called the Rockin' Roller Coaster. Aerosmith. Rockin' Roller Coaster. And... Um, Man, it was intense, you know. I, I don't know if you've been there or just imagine in your own, on your own mind this roller coaster just, just takes off. And you see it. Like, when the closer you get to it, you see it, and it goes through this, like, dark tunnel. So it's not outside, it's inside. So it makes it more just, ooh, a little scary. And it just takes off. And it goes from, like, zero to 60 in, like, three seconds. And just, wow. And you hear, like, kids and grown men screaming as they get taken <laughs> off in the distance. And this is a true story. I know preachers exaggerate a little bit. This is not exaggeration. Uh, me and my son were in line, and I think, I think mommy was with us too. Uh, her name's Bethany. And we were there, and, and there was this kid. And he was probably like 10 years old. And um, he's waiting in line with his mom. I guess it was his mom. And he, he, he could see it on him, man. He, he, he was not filled with the joy of the Lord. <laughs> the spirit of fear had jumped on that child. <laughs> And, and he was just, he started panicking. And he started saying, I don't want to go. He's right behind us. I don't want to go. And, and then his mom's like, oh, you going, kid. <laughs> We've been waiting for three hours. You getting on the rock and roller coaster. And he's like, I don't want to go. And he just, he's getting louder and louder. And Elijah's like hitting me. He's like, dad. I'm like, I know, son, people are crazy. And he's just like, I'm not getting on. I'm not getting on. And his voice just kept getting louder and louder. Am I telling the truth? I'm telling the truth. And uh, he's just getting louder and louder. He's like, I'm not doing it. And she's yelling just as loud at him. Yes, you are. I'm telling you, you don't mess with the mama when it comes to getting things done. And it got so bad that the kid was holding on to this rail. And I promise you, the mom was pulling him. His body was parallel to the ground. And Elijah's like, Dad, what do we do? I said, just pray, son, just pray. <laughs> and so finally we went. I, 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 think, I think they went on it. I, I don't know, poor child. He might not have made it. But <laughs> later on that night, we see him. It was so funny. We see him out. And the park's huge, you know. I mean, it's massive. Somehow we see him again, and my son sees the mom. He's like, there she is, Dad. <laughs> there she is. Well, I tell you that. Man, the Holy Spirit's not going to pull you on a journey. He, he's not. He's not going to pull you with you screaming and crying. But I promise you, he'll allow us to get to a place where we're so desperate for him. Come on, somebody. Y'all help me preach a little bit today. I'll walk in this section. Y'all aren't helping me out any over here. I got one lady helping me out over here. He will start pulling on you through your circumstances. He's not going to force you or manipulate you, but he'll allow us to walk through some things. You say, God, all I can do is look up. God, all I can do is cry out to you. That's why worship's so important, man. You come in this place, it's so important to dial in and to raise your voice regardless of the season that you're in because we're praying and worshiping a God who is over all the seasons. The good seasons, the bad seasons, the challenging seasons, the seasons filled with victory, seasons filled with even defeat in your life. We are worshiping him. And as you say, Holy Spirit, I want you to lead. I promise you, my friend, he will lead your life. 
and he doesn't lead you in the in places that are filled with darkness he leads you to places that are filled with life that are filled with light. Does that mean you don't go through hard times? Absolutely not. But even in the hard times, my God is with me every single step of the way. And I promise you this, when you walk through things that are challenging, that are difficult as a teenager, or you're in your 20s, or you're in your 80s, and God is with you, people will see something different about you and say, my God, how do they live the way they live? And you'll be able to say, it's only because of God Almighty. Come on, can you give him praise in here today? But he's not going to force you. You got you to gotta allow the Holy Spirit to do it. So I want to give you just a couple practical things here. And then we'll, we'll wrap up as it relates to following the cloud, following the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Two ways that the Holy Spirit is leading us. The first one is this, in who you are becoming. Who you're becoming. All of us love talking about where we're going. Man, I can't wait to get married. I mean, you remember those days? Then you got married. <laughs> I can't wait to have kids. Then you gives you kids. We're all about where we're going, but God says, I want to do something on the inside of you. I want to change this right here because if you are not ready for where you're going, when you get there, it will not be what you hoped it would be. He wants to get your heart ready, your spirit ready. And every single day that we have breath to breathe, it's Holy Spirit, shape and mold my spirit, shape and mold my heart. And I promise you, the Holy Spirit will use a gift, and I say gift, called conviction to transform your life. Conviction is the love of God expressed, not the anger of God expressed. He convicts his children. He convicts those that he loves. And you and I, we know this. I don't have to spend a long time here. But you know when you start heading in a direction, start making some choices, Start saying some things, doing some things, thinking some things, involved in things, where you start getting a check in your spirit. That's the Holy Ghost talking to you. I say to my kids, I, I, I mean, I, I preach to them on the way to school. They, they love it. They're like, oh, just keep going, Daddy. No, they're not. But I will preach to them, and I'll say, listen, if you feel a check in your soul right here inside of you, you listen to that. I'll ask them whenever they do something, they're thinking, man, what were you doing? I'll say, did you feel inside of you anything that said, don't do that? <laughs> and I love it when they look at me and they're like, no. I'm like, you need salvation. <laughs> but I like it when they say, yeah, I, I felt something before because what's that? That's the Holy Spirit speaking. And I, I talk to people all the time. I say, man, I've never heard God speak. I've never heard him speak to me. Yes, you have. If you've ever felt conviction, what is that? That's the whisper of the Holy Spirit saying, hey, follow me. Don't go that way. Follow me. Follow the cloud in your life and what God is doing. And God uses this beautiful gift. John chapter 16, verse 8 says, and when he comes, speaking of the Holy Spirit, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness. I love that it says two things, sin and righteousness, because oftentimes we think about conviction, it's only related to sin, but God doesn't just convict us on things what not to do, he convicts us on things of to do. Go this way. And if God's righteousness in the coming judgment, <coughs> conviction is not about focusing on our sin. Everybody listen to me. It's about focusing on your Savior. It's a shift. And that's God leading you of who you're becoming as you're following the voice of the Holy Spirit, as you're reading this word, any Bible readers in the house, as you're reading, one person, anybody read the Bible in here, as you're reading your word, the Holy Spirit will speak to you because what's he doing? He's conforming you. He's shaping you. And the last I checked, none of us have arrived. None of us are perfect. We're pursuing him, and we're going to have days where we miss it. But even when we do, you start going your own direction. That cloud will start to speak to you. Just start following him again. Start living for him again. I love my grandmother. Man, my grandmother, she was a trip. She lived to be right at 90 years old. We called her Mamaw. Any, anybody have a Mamaw in the house? Anybody? And her real name was Helen Shell. But Mamaw, she loved Jesus, but she would get in that flesh sometimes. 
I mean, she had a way. She cracked me up, man. She's so funny. Uh, she, she had a hard life. I mean, a hard life. And she just served God. I remember even when she was like older and, and my, my grandfather had passed away, she still, she had hardly any money. She would always tithe every single month and whatever she had coming in. It, it was amazing. Just such a challenge to me. But I remember, Mamaw, she, she would always get all my kids' names wrong, even my wife's name wrong. My wife's name's Bethany, and she'd be like, David, on the phone, how's Brittany doing? I'm thinking, Mamaw, you trying to get me in trouble. I do not know a Brittany, never met a Brittany before. Her name is Bethany. I've got a son named Judah. She thought his name was Judas to the day he died. I was like, man, well, we didn't go that route with the Bible names. <laughs> Judah, not Judas. Uh, he wasn't a good one. Um, but I, I love Mamma because one time when, when we were living in Birmingham, she, she came to visit us, and, and bless her heart, she couldn't drive. Oh, Lord, have mercy. She was just slow and behind that wheel. The uh, Lord was with her, but she was slow, slow and, and steady. And I remember she got home, and she was so upset. She said, Dave, you won't believe what happened. I said, Mamma, what happened? She said, I was driving down the road. This man, he pulled up next to me, and he shot me the bird. That's what she said. <laughs> Shouldn't say that in church, right? I'm sorry. Shot me the bird. I said, Mamma, what did you do? She said, I got so upset. I tried to do it back to him, but I just gave him all five. <laughs> when you leave today, don't you be giving people all five in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's a funny story. But man, our flesh will get the best of us. We are, we are so weak. I'm, t I'm weak. Anybody else weak in here? Okay, good. Thank God. We, we weak. In just a moment in time, we can lose sight of where that cloud is leading us. I mean, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and show you, don't go that way or do go this way. I'm telling you, there's decisions every single day that you have to make in your life. How you raise your kids, what you do in your job, your workplace, how, what friends you have, all those things, what, what entertainment you're a part of. We have thousands of decisions every single day. Some are much bigger than others. No, what cereal you eat, I don't think, think the Lord really cares what cereal you eat. But we have all these decisions. Listen to me, church. Be led by the cloud. Follow the cloud, the Holy Spirit, in every single thing that you do and listen to his voice. Y'all getting something out of this today? Last, last thing, and we'll, we'll close up. So the Holy Spirit is leading us in who we're becoming, but also where you're going. You're going somewhere. And God has a place for you. He was trying to get his people from Egypt to the promised land. I'm telling you, God has a promised land for your life. I don't know what it is, but he knows what it is. And I thought this morning, just in preparation and just praying over this time, there are millions of, of Israelites leaving. You know, the crazy thing is God knew every single one of them individually. It wasn't just this mass mob he was leading. He was leading every single person, young and old, female and male. He was leading them all individually because there was a plan and a purpose for their life. And some of the most frustrating times in our life is when we know God's spoken to us about where he's taken us, but we're not there yet. I've come today to tell you, do not Grow weary in doing good. Don't give up. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Don't just say, well, God, I'm just going to do it myself because there are waters in your life that you cannot part yourself. Moses was not that good. He could have stood up and held that staff, but if God's spirit was not there, that water did not part. There are things in your life you try to knock down doors and knock down doors that maybe God has set up to shut in your life to get you a different direction. Because the doors he wants open, there's no man that can keep them from not opening. You hear that? Somebody needs to hear that today. There's things you've been seeking, you believe God, but you've got to wait on the timing of God. His timing is perfect. And so God will lead you to where you're going. And I love this scripture in Galatians chapter 5. I want to ask Peyton to come on back up. Galatians chapter 5. How many appreciate Peyton? Man, he does great, man. It says this, since we are living by the Spirit. You're living by the Spirit. It's not just I prayed a prayer of salvation. No, man, I'm, I'm after the things of God. I'm fully committed to the things of God. Since we are living by the Spirit, 
Let us follow. There it is again, follow. You're not leading, you're following the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. I love that it says in every part of our lives. Who I'm becoming, where I'm going, in my present, in my future, in my home, at my workplace, at my church, in my neighborhood, in every part. We don't compartmentalize our relationship with Jesus. I had a girlfriend years ago, wasn't the Lord's will, married someone else much, much greater. But I had a girlfriend. And I remember, I wasn't planning on saying this, so I swear it's a little awkward right now. But I remember, <laughs> that's what's going through my mind. I remember she wouldn't tell people we were dating. I mean, you know, that's a red flag. She didn't want people to know we were dating. And it was cool after one month. But after two months, it was like, hey, what am I, chopped liver? You know, what's up? What was she doing? She was okay with her and I knowing that we had a relationship. But other parts of her life, she wasn't okay with it. When it comes to following God, oh, I feel the Holy Spirit right now, man. When it comes to following God, we're following him every single day, every single moment, every single relationship, every single entertainment, every single thing that we do in our job, every single thing that God has called us to do in life. We are following him. Because he saved us. He's delivered us. He set me free. Man, and I, I couldn't do it. But he did. And in every way, in every season, whether I'm on the mountain or I'm in the valley, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the cloud. Where is he, where is he saying to go? Who's he saying to connect to? Where is he saying to give? Where is he saying to serve? I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit. And last thing I'll say, everybody look up here. Last thing I'll say, when you do this, you get ready. Because God will take you to places you never thought possible. I don't care how old you are and you feel like your season, your time's done, or you're too young and you can't get there yet. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. My dad is 72 years old. God has done more through him, and he's been a godly man his whole life. He's done more through him in the past five years than he has in all the years before combined, spiritually speaking. 72. He's gone to Kenya dozens of times. And, and I'm not saying everybody has to go to Kenya, but that's what God called him to do. That's where the cloud was leading him. And it might look crazy to other people, but you don't care about what other people say about where the cloud's leading you. You follow the cloud of the Holy Spirit in your life, and God's allowed him to preach, and he's not even a preacher, to hundreds of thousands of students. And now he's a spiritual father in our church, I'm telling you, to dozens and dozens of men who they call him and look up to him and ask him questions and ask him to pray. What did he do? He followed the cloud. There's some young people in here, man. Starting today, start following the cloud. Say, well, where do I look? I don't see my cloud. It's on the inside of you. The same spirit that rose Christ from the grave dwells inside of you and he will change who you are and he will direct where you're going. Amen, everybody. Amen. I want to do this. I want you to just keep your heads up.